Being with today's great American smokeout, Bowen also recommended that all states ban the sale of tobacco to anyone under 18. The cigarette industry's own code forbids promotion aimed at people under 21. But one group targeted by cigarette manufacturers is the black community. And CBS News correspondent Bob Faw has a report on that. Black Americans are smoking more than white Americans, and they're getting sicker from heart disease and lung cancer. Lung cancer is now 50% higher among black men compared to white men. Cigarette smoking is causing an awful lot of deaths in the black community. But in the inner city, the message to light up is overwhelming. The tobacco companies know a market when they see it. You can't get away from it. It's all around us. No, it's not good for the community to have that many boobos around like that because that's enticed the kids to smoke cigarettes. This is the way to stop the traffic on any city street. The tobacco industry has also carefully cultivated the black market by sponsoring events like this, which associate smoking with glamour, and by contributing to black charities. Gee, I am so grateful for this. With its gift of $1 million to the United Negro College Fund, R.J. Reynolds is the fund's biggest donor. You wouldn't consider the tobacco industry money tainted in any way? It, it comes to us green. And that's all that counts. That's the important thing for the United Negro College Fund. I'm not going to pass judgment on the tobacco industry. The, the tobacco industry has bought off the silence of black organizations. And in black publications where roughly 20% of advertisements urge readers to smoke, tobacco industry money can mean the difference between staying in business or going under. They're not going to tell the cigarette companies, we're not going to take your advertising because they have too much to lose. So black publications tend not to run anti-smoking articles. WBLS. And black radio stations, afraid of what tobacco companies might do, shy away from anti-smoking commercial. I would be concerned as to whether or not they may ruffle some feathers uh, within Philip Morris. They may decide to spend their advertising dollars on another radio station. If a person is receiving a large amount of money, uh, they will not bite the hand that is feeding them. For example, when we asked the NAACP to discuss the money it gets from the tobacco industry, the NAACP refused. We asked Essence Magazine. The magazine also said no. The topic, said one of its officials, is just too sensitive. The reluctance of black leaders to criticize the tobacco industry perplexes New York's mayor who has chastised them in an anti-smoking radio spot. Leaders in the black community ought to be in the vanguard to protect the black community. They aren't, they say, because other issues are more urgent and because some of them think it is paternalistic and even racist to tell blacks what to do. A notion the tobacco industry encourages. What they are saying is, these people just can't be trusted to look at an advertisement and make the same decision that a white person can make. To me, I think that is a racist approach. But I don't like to be looked at, oh, she smokes. So sessions urging blacks to stop smoking are rare. Efforts to get them to smoke even more are thriving. For now, the winner seems evident. So, say doctors, are the consequences. Bob Fall, CBS News, New York.